can we get Todd Wiley tonight? That I'm really not, really, not really interested in telling the story right now, but if you want it, I'll give it to you. If, if you really don't want to, you don't have to, but if you just, it's slight aversion, then yeah. Well, okay, well, are you going to do it or what? Yeah, go ahead. Story time with Ted. Todd Wiley. Well, this, this bully, uh, I don't know. I was in a classroom. And it's in here. It was, I think it was, uh, God, what was the class? It was an English class. Which grade? Um, I think it was like eighth. Eighth? Tenth, tenth grade. So no, you're the... no, ninth. What? Ninth, ninth grade. Ninth grade? It was ninth grade English class. Yeah. Gotcha. And I sat in, we sat in these assigned seats. They gave us assigned seats. So we sat in the same place every day. And I, it was just alphabetized. So I'm Ted Thompson, and he's Todd Wiley, so he was directly behind me. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. Yeah. He sat there, and he just, he would sit there, and he would, like, just, like, push my head back. What? Like, his hand on my head and push it forward. And just push forward? What yeah, would you, you, push what would you do? Sometimes he would slap me on the ear. Oh. With his finger, like, like, you know, flicking my ear. Yeah? Yeah. So he was doing this all the time, and I told him to stop it, and he just laughed. Eventually they got a good laugh, and so then I... One time I just started ignoring it, and he just kept doing it incessantly. And finally I turned around, and I just attacked him. And so I, so I got in trouble. They took me down to the, like the, the principal or something. And the teacher said, well, actually, no, they didn't take me to the principal. The teacher just had us both sit aside. He says, what's going on with you two? Why can't they get along? And I told him. So that was not the end of it, of course. You know, He was always like making jokes at me and you know, laughing at me and just being a, you know, regular clown at my expense. In class as well? Yeah, class. Because there's always like a few minutes before class. Yeah. I'd show up early and he would show up, you know, towards the end, but just a few minutes just to have his fun. During class, it would be so boring. He'd just start picking on me. He would just... So, so Yeah. So that was one time, then, I don't know, the next time we were in a health class and he started picking on me in there to just, you know. So how would it how would it go down, like, when he would pick on you? Would you, like, start punching him, trying to punch him, or? No, no, I don't know. It just it got to a point, I don't know, where, just, I don't know. He, went... Finally, the teacher, like, noticed it enough that I think he sent me somewhere else and then that's when it all stopped but I don't know then we went and met in another class and he was in this class as well we were in German together we were in another class together German and Jesus and then they would set us up in groups and and this teacher was not so stupid he was one you didn't want to cross and so he was on better behavior in that class he was trying to speak German, and they were making fun of him. And I would do my German, and they would make fun of my German because I didn't sound stupid like he did. And so it was a little different. And so I guess he, I don't know, he just everyone felt uncomfortable in that class because he would go around and do relays on us, and we had to say the, the German word and all that stuff. We had to say it right, and. So we didn't. You never knew what was going to happen next. So you had to be on your toes. So it didn't have time to think. But I had like two or three classes with him. And on another one, he was like on a totally different table too. So I don't know. Over time, I just got a bunch of classes, and he was never in them anymore. But I went to San Francisco State University, and he was working in like their sub shop there. And I came up there, and I think I think he had matured enough that. When I walked up to that booth and I ordered my food, he felt kind of ashamed of himself. How old were you then? It was like about 20. 20? Yeah. So uh, so way big uh, skip here from 
eighth grade to twenty. So when you went to order, he felt ashamed. He was kind of like looking down, like, well, because I was, we were both in San Francisco State University, and I walked up, and he was serving me a sandwich, uh, and I don't know. He just, it was just a different uh, thing, you know. He just wasn't. He had done all this stuff to me back when he was younger, and now it's like you know he's trying to be an adult, and he's serving me food, and he's realized I don't know. It just sort of, sort of like I, I'm, I'm glad that he had to face me again, because that was something that you should have talked shit like bitch. Now you're serving me, uh, no, serving me that fucking sandwich. I didn't do that shit. I just I've been a nice guy all my life, and you know that's too nice of a guy. That's what some would say. But I've been a nice guy all my life, and this is the time when somebody who wanted to be better was had a very, very irksome reminder that they were a fucking jackass. So how did it make you feel when you were in the when you were like in eighth grade and he was picking on you and just bullying you constantly? How did that make you feel exactly? Think back. It's kind of, kind of powerless. And wondering when something, when justice was going to be done, not realizing that no one really cared. No one really cared about what was going. On. Why wouldn't you? Why instead of like just blowing up and uh, and I attacking? Did I did blow up like Manuel, you know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, all I did, did. End up in the with a bloody nose and in the principal's office. No, no, I'm asking why instead of blowing up, didn't you like tell the teacher that I did. Todd I Wiley? Did. Teacher would tell you stop doing it, but then when the teacher's not there, it doesn't. No one cares. So she just said stop doing it every time, and that's that yeah. was that. And then he would just do it again. And, then laugh, yeah. and she would say that every time he came to her, just stop doing it to him. She would just keep keep going up and saying stop doing it, and then he would had, just do it. I had one person say, it's "Just Ted, stop tattletaling." Stop tattletaling. Yeah. That's just, shitty. I don't know. I just like when I watch stuff like Coal Mine, I start thinking like, you know what? That's what needs to happen. Someone gets to push other people around like that for so long. You know, those bu- those bullies deserve to die. Fuck with whatever anyone thinks. I mean, I'm I'm all for it. Shoot those fuckers. So did you, so did you want to like take a gun to school and shoot this bully? There's there's a time. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. But you they're, but you I'm never did. They're, these bullies are kind of immortalized in my mind. They they are not those people anymore, but they deserved to die at that time I felt. They had no respect for for me. They didn't give a shit about me. They just lacked laughing at me. I think people that that uh just want to humiliate others, I think they deserve to get some payback. Maybe they don't deserve to die but I think they deserve some really ruthless payback. And, you know, given emotions could be high, I, I think, I don't know what what I'm capable of. I would love to see them wet their pants with a gun to their head, with a real bullet in the chamber. That would be, that would be nice. That's what you would like to see. Because mm-hmm. that's, that's about the level of intimidation that they throw out. So that's kind of like the level of intimidation they need to feel. They don't respect much, so they will respect that. Gotcha. So that's how you feel about Todd Wiley, even though he like ended up being a functional yeah, adult. I, you still yep. think that should happen? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because the result is still scars on other people. I don't know. I was just one of... How many others he did that to? I don't know. So you do you feel the same way about Manuel Ortega and oh, yeah. uh, oh. Scott oh. Beavers? Oh, they're all grouped in the same freaking bowl. And the redheaded kid? Oh yeah, yeah. I can't remember his name. What's the redheaded kid's name again? His last name was Pryor. <clears throat> was what? Pryor. Cryer. Or Pritchett. I can't remember. Or Pritchett. So, yeah, I I could probably figure it out. But I, I already locked up all those dumb books. It's because of those people I really had no no pride in my school. Because of those people I never really wanted to to mingle at dances and other stuff. 
because they they would show up there and they always make a make a fun time into something ugly. They kind of rob me of my dignity, and then they rob you of your your uh, some of the functions you want to be in. You, you decide you can't go to those because they'll see you there, and then they'll come after you. So did you did did he make you hate your childhood, or just that part of your childhood? <laughs> yeah, there were there were times when uh. I don't know. I was wanting to go to school. I think I did this for like three weeks in a row. I missed, my mom would say, Dad, you, you got to go to school. And I'd say, no, I'm sick. And she left me at home. And then went like that for four days. And just then, because you were so afraid of Todd Wiley? Yeah, no, afraid of bullies in general. Oh, uh, just bullies? So yeah. you're, you were bullied that severely? Yeah. Yeah. Mother names. Those are the only ones I can think of. Once you go to college, people are not that way. Yeah, no one, no one really bullies you in college. That shit's over with. Yeah, they still do, but I never, I never, I've never been bullied never, a single time. I never got bullied, but I could say it could still happen. I could see it happening easily. I could know? see it happen not easily. I could see it possibly happening at like a major university with lots of young people. But at GBC, yeah. I never got. I've never been bullied, not even no, once. No, no, that kind. Of I don't know. It seemed like when I when I reached like adult height and everything was like in the adult world, it was like adult you know, world. some it was more about staring down the wrong guy in the hall and then attracting attention. You know, these people that want to look for trouble, and if you you went looking into their eyes, they'd assume that you're you're trying to cause trouble. Kind of like territorial, like if you don't act docile, you can't walk by, and I don't know. So those those people are pretty much you know, <laughs> I mean those those ones were pretty easy to spot and you know no one really respected those people. They just sort of ignored them, <clears throat> and they thought being ignored made them that they were somehow powerful or something. And that's not true either. They're just nobody gave gave a shit about them. So, but, what, uh, so what the bullies say? the bullies the bullies appear about. I'd say around fifth, fourth, and between fourth grade, all the way up till tenth. I think, I think it was like uh, I worked over the summer, and then I came back on. I think it was eleventh grade. Thinking no, yeah, tenth grade from tenth. Uh, yeah, ten. Actually, this this happened at ninth grade when uh, Todd Wiley was doing all this shit. We got to tenth grade. That's when we started doing the German teacher and everything. And I was more worried when I walked in there. But I don't know. It just didn't seem to happen there. So he, yeah. he just didn't fuck with you there, Todd Wiley. Yeah, didn't. I, I just didn't get fucked with. Uh, we went to a different high school. Um, we were at this one place called Will C. Wood, and that was like our seventh or eighth and ninth grade. But once we went to tenth grade, we were we were basically intermingling with a different school. So oh, there were, I see. We were put so he was kind of like out of his element, and I was kind of like out of mine, and we were mingling with other personalities that came from a, basically a school that's a better that's a that has more rich kids in it. Yeah. So, I don't know, there was a kind of a greater sensibility. Sort of, more snobs, but like less uh, yeah. like trailer oh. trash coming at you. Yeah, shit that, that used to fly, that didn't fly there at all. So, the other thing was sort of uh, good after that. I never encountered a bully after that. So, he pretty much just bullied you during like 4th and 5th grade and shit. No, or, no, and, no. And, well, 8th grade, 8th grade. No, yeah, 8th and ninth grade. 8th yeah. and ninth grade, he bullied yeah. you. Yeah. After that, though, it was it was smooth sailing. Um, so I would say my bully periods they, they were fourth through ninth grade. Fourth through ninth. ninth. Yeah. So did you hurt Todd Wiley when you attacked him? No, no, I just pushed him back. Are you not? Are you not a very good fighter? I, or? I think I did like hit him in the face, and then he he punched me in the arm or something. That was it. So you just kind of had a small scuffle, and then the teacher immediately broke it up. Yeah, and that was that. So, that was what, what what would you say to Todd Wiley if you could? 
today. Um, I hope he's doing okay. You do? Yeah. You wouldn't wish ill upon him? No, not not in the form he's taken now. Oh. But if you could go back in time too, then you would hurt him. But no. Yeah. I would hurt him psychologically. He didn't deserve the... The power over you? Horrible shit. Which the red-headed dude did. So the red-headed dude was worse. The red-headed kid. Yeah, he was worse. Do we get story time with Ted, red-headed kid, tonight? Or do we get that another time? No, not tonight. <laughs> we're gonna have boring. to. We're gonna have to post a name to the to the redheaded kid. We have to attach a name to this. Yeah, I know he's. I think it's Pritchett was his last name, or it's Pryor. It's ironic because Patrick's redheaded, so yeah, it's really I, ironic. I thought about that, but Patrick's not like that. No, no, it's not that I know of, you know. But you know, anyway. So See? okay. What? Being a bully is easy to do. It's just like, you know, you it's empowering, I guess. I, I someone, suppose. Someone that doesn't feel like they're very powerful, if they can if they can intimidate, they feel like they, they are stronger. Hmm. Okay. So do you have anything else you'd like to add? No. About the bully? No. Did he ever ruin anything of yours? Who? Todd Wiley. No. No, that's a different kind of bully. Okay. Uh, like a saboteur kind. No. No, just push me around. How? Uh, uh, let me okay. ask, how does Todd Wiley stack up against Manuel Ortega and Scott Beavers? Scott Beavers is quite a different matter. Scott Beavers was kind of like more methodical and more nefarious and like behind the scenes, like he's kind of he he, uh, he was tongue. abusive. He was very abusive as a friend, just verbally, right? Scott verbally Beavers was. Abusive. Yes. Not he, physically at all. Uh, no, he was verbally abusive and very and then and somewhat and intimidating as well. As he as I decided he wasn't going to be my friend anymore. Then he became uh, much more abusive. Scott Beavers got just intimidating, huh? Well, so, yes. I don't know. I got to be where I was uh, kind of afraid of him because he was he was talking shit behind my back to people, turning him against me. Um, he was really – he's like worm tongue. Scott Beavers is like worm tongue. Yeah, he's worm tongue. And since he's intimidating, he speaks with some sort of authority and oh. people – respond to that um jesus so people so, like believed all the shit he said because he spoke with authority correct. and he was out to sabotage all your friendships and and just and he, tarnish your name exactly and he was intelligent and you know he he could put things a certain way and so you know at that time i'd had enough of him and all that stuff and i just decided then and there that you know i wanted to switch change of pace so, like, what are the, some specific uh, things that Scott Beaver said about you? I have no clue, but I just know the reaction people got. And I what, saw that they wanted nothing to do with me after that. What did they say when you tried to, like, talk to them after you would sabotage your friendships with them? At the, I didn't care anymore because they were, they were obviously his cronies. They were tainted. And you but, didn't really have a crony back when you were that, that age, but... They they obviously hung out in a group and I was outside the group and they all walked together and all this stuff. And then okay, so Manuel Ortega was was different though. Like Manuel Ortega plays into this differently, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's just a an everyday guy walking around looking for a problem to So he is like a tough boy Mexican? Yeah, exactly. He just wanted to fight all the time and he was like no, hey, I I that was just one. That was just too much, you know. Yeah, I'd seen him on different, different, different circumstances, and he was uh, he was okay to me. You know, he wasn't so much. He wasn't a bully. Just sort of like, hey, I'm Manuel Ortega. It, it was like it was like you know, just like an incredible disrespect to me for him to do what he did. So, 
but he, do. yeah, he just kind of like twisted your tit. Yeah. But he, he, that was that the first time Manuel Ortega ever did anything to you? Yeah. Just out of the blue. He just out of the blue just twisted your tit. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got, you felt like, uh, you felt like offended. You didn't feel threatened, but you felt offended, right? Yeah. I was severely offended. Someone would try and do that. Like, like he violated your space? Exactly. Well, of course he violated my space. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So which which of these is the, what's the ranking? Hmm? What's the, where's the ranking here for these, for these three thugs? Well, Scott Beavers is top of the list. Scott we were Beavers? Like, we we're like friends, so, I mean, close friends, as close as like one can get to him, I think. Scott Beavers is the worst. Yeah, and then, uh... Todd Wiley, right? <clears throat> Uh, no, the redheaded guy. He's pretty bad. Okay, the redheaded kid is next. And I mean, we'll cover him another time, people. Oh, I didn't even tell you about Davy Boyne. What, what's the name? Davy Bam. Bam. Yeah. Davy what? Davy Bam. He's my cousin. Davy Bam? My marriage, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's for another, another night. How do you spell Bam. I think it's B A H A B A E H N or something like that. B probably B A Y H N. Bayham. Bayham. Well, I don't think so. There's no Y. But I, I don't know for sure. But anyway, yeah, no, Davey's probably right there right right below the redhead guy. Todd Wiley is like second to last and Manuel Ortega is at the bottom. Because that was just a one time deal. Yeah, it's one time thing. So we still, so we, so the only uh, for everyone watching, in case you're wondering, the only ones we have left to do for now, until Ted remembers more names, is story time with Ted bullies, redheaded kid to which we will attach a name once Ted remembers, and story time with Ted bullies, Davy Bam. Oh yeah, and uh, drill sergeants from the army. What they, what's they, the other name? Drill sergeants. Oh, drill sergeants as bullies? Yeah, drill sergeants from the army, yeah. Yeah, because they, bull they bullied you in the army? Yeah. Well, that's well, kind of yeah. like their job, right? Well, this was different. This was personal. What were some of their names? I don't remember his name. Oh. I might remember if I, if I maybe have some time to think about it and talk about it, because the names will come back to me. It was just one guy? Um, yeah, pretty much. One sergeant that did not like me. Green Birch? Hmm? Green Birch? I don't know what Green Birch is. What did you say? One sergeant? Uh, what Did you give a name? Didn't like me. I don't remember his name. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. We'll, uh, find more, we'll find more bullies. Don't worry. I think my dad's on the list, too. That's just a note of uh, what we all the all the things we have to cover. Mm -hmm. We have a lot to talk about, Ted. And Dad, don't forget Dad. He's a bully too. Your dad? Yeah, he, he, he majorly trespassed on me. He what? I say he majorly trespassed on me. Majorly yeah. trespassed him. Yeah, I'll give you that story too. About your dad, yeah, you can. We can do story time with Ted, Ted's dad. Yeah. Uh. And another. That'll be a long fucking story time. Ted's dad oh. story. Yeah, your dad. No, no, that's not that much. It's not that long. We can make like an hour long story time about your dad. No, I don't have an hour. It's not an hour story. It's. Oh. It's a very simple story, actually. About how you, your but own dad bullied the, you? It's when the bullying began. is based off of what he told me. He told me what a person should do when, when they respect other people's property. And he told me exactly what you should do. And so I, I listened to that story, and then he went ahead and did the opposite to me. And then he got furious that I was holding him to it. 
That's the next story time. Okay. Okay, so I think we got I think we got some good stuff. Today we got two story times. I got like part two. To, I got story time with Ted, rotten mm -hmm. quesadillas, or rotten enchiladas. <laughs> uh, story time with Ted, Todd Wiley. Story Man. time with Ted Scott Beavers, part two. <laughs>